Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, we are going to be looking at the LG Ultrafine OLED Pro 4K EP950 monitor for creative professionals. In this video, I want to share some of my personal experience with this monitor, how it feels using it, how functional it is in my workflow and such. So if you're looking for a truly technical review, you'll find better information from this video by HDTV Test because I ain't got a Sony BVM to compare this monitor to. It's kind of like the Gerald Undone for TV and monitors. But with that said, I feel that I can also add some value by sharing my personal experience with this monitor after using it for a while and also comparing it with my PA32 UCX which I was using as a reference monitor. So full disclosure, I bought this monitor with my own money. LG did not want to reply my emails or my DMs so I bought it and I'm doing this review independently. This video is supported by those of you who has purchased my visionary LUTs and digital assets. Check out the link in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the continued support. The TLDR version of this video is, yes, I think that this OLED monitor is extremely good right off the box, but it's even better if you calibrate it. In fact, I like this monitor so much that I bought another unit to complete my setup. It's definitely a step up from all other monitors out there in terms of contrast and color accuracy. Plus, I was also very lucky to get this at a very good price. So now let's get into the video. So the EP950 uses an OLED panel by Japanese manufacturer JOLED. There are options for 27 inch and also 32 inch sizes, both with 4K but technically UHD resolution with a 16 by 9 normal expert ratio for monitors. It has a 10-bit panel with an amazing contrast ratio of 1 million to 1 and a quick response time of 1 millisecond but the maximum refresh rate is only 60 Hz. That's okay for creative work but not so much for gaming. The color gamut reaches 99% Adobe RGB and 99% DCI-P3 which means that it also covers 100% of standard RGB, sRGB and Rec. 709. This OLED monitor also has a screen shift function to reduce the burn-in which happens to self-flip pixels on a monitor. So there's quite a bit of space between the screen and the bezel for the screen to shift pixels. That's also why it's marketed as 26.9 inches instead of 27 inches. One of the complaints that I saw online is that the matte finish on the screen itself. The reason why a matte finish is not preferred for professional monitors is because it kind of messes up with the contrast accuracy. But I feel that the screen is quite reflective if you have any lights in front of the monitor. But this can also be solved if you are working in a low light environment, which you are expected to if you are a professional. Some of the other features are HDR10 capabilities and hardware calibration, which I'll get to later on in the video. I also have to praise LG for their intuitive on-screen control and less distracting no-signal screen compared to other brands. And it's all controlled with a joystick at the bottom of the screen. The only improvement that I feel it needs is a separate power button because sometimes when I'm clicking on the joystick, I'm not sure if I'm turning on the monitor or going into the menu. The I.O. or input and output of this monitor is located behind the monitor for easy access. I like this a lot compared to the competitor brand who has placed it at the bottom. So I usually have to fiddle around every time I plug in a cable. So the LG has placed the I.O. ports in a very functional location. On the monitor, you'll find one USB-C, two DisplayPort 1.4, one HDMI 2.0, three USB 3.1 Type-A, one USB Type-B, one 3.5mm headphone out, and also one DC power input. So if you have a MacBook, you can just plug in the USB-C and you have charging and also an extended display. So the monitor itself is very light. Without the stand, it only weights 3 kilograms compared to my Asus PA32 UCX, which is over 9 kilograms, 3 times the weight. It's so much trouble to bring that heavy monitor around to a client's place because of the weight. And if you put it in a box for production, the whole monitor just fills up your car boot. So it's so much better for me now with this thin and very light OLED monitor, especially when I'm doing some on-site grading for a feature film later on this year. On the topic of weight, it's 
it's also much easier to find a monitor arm for this monitor. I had to search for heavy duty arm for the PA32 UCX, which has limitations to its flexibility. So a lighter monitor is definitely better in most cases. Another thing that I want to talk about is why I picked the 27 inch over the bigger 32 inch monitor, because bigger is always better, right? Well, since I switched to a Mac Studio recently, I can only use an Ultra Studio Monitor 3G to output a clean feed for the reference monitor. Check out my video on IO ports if you're not sure what I'm talking about. The Ultra Studio Monitor 3G can only go up to HD, which is 1920x1080p. So if I output HD on a 32-inch monitor, it will look a bit blurry compared to a smaller 27-inch one. That's why I don't see a benefit of getting a larger monitor when I can only monitor in HD. Another big factor that I didn't choose the 32 over the 27 inch is also because of the price. The 32 inch retails at about $2,500 on B&H, while the 27 inch is around $1,800. But I found a deal for the 27 inch on Lazada for around $1,000 or 4,000 ringgit. That's quite a steal if you ask me. To get an OLED monitor from other brands, you need to spend at least $3,500. LG has marketed this monitor as calibrated right out of the box. And they also included a factory calibration report. But what I find weird is the Delta E, which is the difference between the monitor color and the benchmark color, best being Delta E of zero. The report says that it's rated for less than three. This is surprising considering that most monitors of this caliber are marketed as Delta E less than 1. But not to worry, the results get better after my own calibration. So here's my verdict of the monitor in terms of color accuracy straight out of the box without calibration in Rec. 709 mode. The colors are a little too saturated and the contrast is also a bit too high. And usually the manufacturers will also cool down the temperature a little bit to make things look sharper. But someone once said, if you care about color accuracy, calibrate your monitor. The calibration process is pretty smooth and intuitive. Just make sure that you use the cables provided in the box. Here's the calibration report from LG Calibration Studio after my first round of calibration. So it seems pretty fine after the calibration as someone who stares at their monitor for 10 hours every day. I can say that the colors are not far off from what a calibrated display should look like. To be honest with you, I did quite a lot of reading before getting this monitor because of the bad reviews. I also got a little intimidated by the solutions on the Leaf Gamma Gain forum using Colorspace LTE and a LUT box or buy converter 12G to hold the calibration LUT. But luckily, I have to do none of that. The LG Calibration Studio works like a charm on a Mac. So I want to compare the LG OLED with my Asus PA22UCX. The biggest difference you see is the contrast because of the nature of these panels. The PA32UCX has a back lit mini LED with LCD panel so the blacks won't look exactly black no matter what you do. And sometimes it becomes a nuisance because details in the blacks gets mushy from the lack of contrast. Like I know that there are details in the black but the client still wants to lift the blacks up to recover more details. Another case is for phones that support OLED panels like my Samsung S22 Plus. You see unexpected colors if you don't monitor on an OLED panel. And another reason why I like the OLED panel better is for the wider viewing angle compared to the mini LED panel on the Asus PA22 UCX. Now I know most of you who are looking into this monitor, you're probably in the creative industry and working in the Apple ecosystem like iPhones, iPads and Macs. Apple has quite a standard color over all of their devices. So I thought it might be interesting to compare the monitor after its calibration with my 2021 iPad Pro. Pro tip, turn off your true tone function in the display settings to get better color accuracy. It only messes up with your white balance to compensate for your surrounding. Here's a recreation to help you get a full picture. The iPad looks a little less saturated overall and the contrast is lower, probably because it's gamma setting which is around 1.96 to 2.2. But the color gamut seems to be smaller than the monitor because a lot of the colors in the shadows are unnoticeable. So what that means is that if you color grade on your iPad, you might find a different result when you're viewing it on a higher end monitor like this 10-bit 
LG OLED. Overall, I'm impressed by this LG Ultrafine 27 EP950 OLED 4K monitor. I don't expect it to be as great as a $35,000 Sony BVM, but I think it's a good step forward for LG to come up with an affordable OLED monitor in the market for creatives. So that's all for this video. If you found something useful, feel free to drop a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.